Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I'm Emily Nimsikond here at the Nebraska Library Commission, filling in for your regular host, Krista Burns. Encompass Live is the Nebraska Library Commission's weekly online event covering a variety of library activities and topics. The show is free and open to anyone to watch. There are one-hour sessions and they are presented every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Central Time. And they include things like presentations, interviews, book reviews, web tours, mini trading sessions, and Q&A sessions um, presented by either NLC staff or guest speakers. As we're going along, if you have any questions, if you, um, you can go ahead and type them in the question box. Or if you do have a microphone, you can go ahead and let us know in the question box that you'd like to be unmuted and we can unmute you and you can ask your question that way. Um, today we have uh, NLC staff member here, Catherine Brockmeyer, is here to talk about internships. Take it away, Catherine. Thanks, Emily. Hi, good morning. Uh, depending on where you are today, it's May Day. Happy May Day. And do you have snow, sleet, rain, cloud cover, sun? Um, many of our attendees here uh, today are from Nebraska, but we do have some individuals from out of state, and we do want to welcome you. Those from Nebraska probably know about the IMLS 21st Century Librarian Grant that the Nebraska Library Commission received. And just a little bit of background on that. We received this grant, uh, a federal grant, in order to provide scholarships to students who are seeking a degree in library and information science, and also to provide grants to public libraries so that they might hire interns, and that is a recruitment tool. And so many of our attendees here today uh, work at libraries that were recipients of the grants. And so some of the information that I'm going to provide today is an orientation to the program. But I feel it would be beneficial for all individuals who are attending today. As always, if you have any questions, please put them in the questions uh, section. Emily will be monitoring that and will be able to relay the questions to me. And I will answer them to the best of my ability. Just real quickly, I'll take you to the website. Uh, just want to show you the uh, 2013 internship grant program. So if you want to learn a little bit about the, the program itself and what the goals are, which we will go over somewhat today. But um, this does talk about the internship grant program. It's on our Now Hiring at Your Library site. And you're welcome to visit that and um, see what that's all about. So again, the Laura Bush 21st Century Librarian uh, program that we received in 2010 from um, the Institute of Museum and Library Services, we have partnered with the Nebraska Library Association. Um, they have received funding in the past as match to our grant to provide funding to the public libraries for the grants. They also serve on the selection committee and review the applications, and they help, uh, help us announce that this the grant program is available and they help us uh, announce who the recipients are. And if you at any time if you have anything that you want to add, you know, if I bring something up and you have a suggestion, something that you feel needs clarification or anything to that effect, please do write in the questions section and Emily will pass that on to me and we can discuss it. So perhaps you've got a grant or you got funding, let's say, from your city um, or your foundation or your friends group um, or you received the IMLS grant and now you, I mean, you you had to do some, give, give it some forethought before you filled out the application. You had to have something in mind, hopefully, you know, that you knew what some of your goals were, what some, pro what some of the projects were the type of intern you might like to hire, or you may have actually had an intern in mind, um, which was fine. And um, so you applied for the internship grant, or you received the funding, and now, now comes the real work. What do you do with it? Um, you can, if you haven't already selected an intern, um, you um, need to advertise for your position, and uh, you know, be be serious in your advertising so that your applicants take it seriously, so that they see it as a job, that they don't see it just as perhaps a summer job, but as a professional uh, position, so that they know that they need to take it seriously. 
And the Ann Arbor District Library um, Employment Opportunity Job Posting, they discussed this at ALA last summer, and I asked them if they would share that with me. And I need to get out of, oops, go back. I need to show that to you real quickly. And here is what they posted. So it was uh, almost the same as any of their other external job postings. Um, and it gave people um, an idea of how much money that they would make, um, um, who they were expected, what these people were expected to do, um, what the duties would be, um, qualifications if you wanted any. It looks to me like this one was to uh, hire at for master's level students, but this might give you an, uh, an example. And this will be posted um, on the slide share, is it? Or um, as a document, our, the yeah, there will be a link to this document. And so many thanks to Ann Arbor. This was kind of an internal document that they shared with me. So it's not very widely disseminated. Another one that you might look, look at was the Lincoln City Libraries. This was their job posting. And they actually gave some of the expectations for each of their branch so that people who are applying uh, might see if this was something that would be a good match for them. What happened to my... So then you have to decide how you're going to hire your intern. Are you going to hire them as a contract worker, as a temporary employee? Or if you have another suggestion as to how you plan to hire your intern, please go ahead and type it in. You definitely need to talk with your city office to find out how they are willing to pay. Um, some of them want to pay them, for example, if it's a $1,000 stipend, they just want a contract worker and that the individual is responsible for their taxes at the end of the year, um, that they, they file, that they made $1,000 straight up, and then they need to complete their own is it W-4, I think. It's a W-4, perhaps, or a W-9, um, but that they complete their own IRS um, form and they take responsibility for the taxes. Other, another way to do it is to hire them as a temporary employee where uh, you have $1,000 to work with. They are paid uh, by the hour, but um, taxes are taken out. And so they don't actually receive a full $1,000. They receive a portion of that with the rest being taken out for taxes. And then once you have hired, um, we have a press release uh, template that we can give to you. And basically it talks a little bit about the internship program and then you can talk about the person that you have hired and what you plan to do with the person. And what's kind of nice about that is that it sets the stage for your, your internship whether you're doing it over the summer or over the course of a year, um, you know, how many hours are they going to put in per week? Are you paying them at least minimum wage? Um, are you, um, you don't have to put that in your press release, but, you know, just how it's going to be planned out. And what's kind of nice is that then those who read your, your, this article can anticipate that this intern is going to be there and maybe they'll be more inclined to come into the library just to see what they're doing or maybe they know them and they want to come in and support them. So it, the press release is a really great idea. It also gain, you also gain some, some interface with the public. They, you puts you out there another opportunity for you to be in the news. Okay, this is a, these are some of the IMLS grant, um, some of the IMLS grant requirements here. I'm just going to go over them a little bit. Once your intern's been hired, um, you let NLC know of the start date and the estimated end date of the internship. Again, you could do this over the summer. Um, you could have this go over several months. Um, just whatever that we want you to think ahead how long it's going to take at, at definitely the start date. Another thing that you need to do is direct your intern to complete and sign the survey completion consent form. Um, as part of our evaluation for our grant, we gather information from the intern at the beginning of the internship and again at the end of the internship. And so um, they go to the online baseline survey, which I will provide that link to the supervisors here, but I just want to show it to everyone because there might be some kind of questions when you do your, your kind of a, your intake with your, with your 
student, it doesn't have to be necessarily a student, it could be somebody um, later on in life that's considering a career change, um, and so it doesn't need to be a traditional high school or college age student. So we get some background information on them, and then um, we kind of ask them what they think goes on in the library all day. And if you had them fill that out, that would be kind of interesting for you to see what are some areas that you might want to introduce them more to. Kind of give you a, it's a baseline, it, it just gives you an indication of what, what their interests are. And then we ask them, um, knowing what they know now, how likely is it they would pursue further education or apply for a job through libraries. And that takes care of that one. Um, for required paperwork for the um, NLC grant, we want you to track the intern's hours and activities. And at the end of the internship, um, we have an online post-internship survey for them to complete. Basically, uh, we ask some of the same questions. How likely are you to look for a job in a library or go on to library school? Um, what were the things that surprised you in your internship? Uh, what were the challenges for you in your internship? And then the supervisors complete their online final report. They have one that they do for each intern they hire, and then um, they do one just about the program in general. So let's talk about the goals of the program because uh, you might want to have an idea before you start your internship what you hope to get out of it and what you hope your intern will get out of it. So one of the points of one of the points of our grant is that interns get involved in real library work and it takes advantage of their experience and interests. So uh, you're bringing them into the library and you're challenging them and helping them. Uh, hone the talents that they have. And then here is <clears throat> where the recruitment comes in, um, that interns see all aspects of library work. And um, if they're in the public library, it might be neat for you to go and visit another library, an academic library. Uh, if you do this over the summer, the school libraries might be closed, but perhaps you know the school librarian and they would give you a tour. Um, some libraries that have applied for grants actually had partners, so they spent some of their hours at one library and some of their hours at another library. But field trips are encouraged. And then you might talk a little bit about the various kinds of careers that you could have in libraries, not necessarily just the public libraries. You could talk about the size of libraries. You could talk about the type of libraries. Um, you could talk about different kinds of library work, uh, from um, being in cataloging to doing programming um, to being the IT specialist. And especially, you know, if you find something that's really of interest to them, seeing if you can match that up with a particular track in, in the library field that might be of interest to them. You might also talk with them about library education um, and for the Nebraskans, uh, what the opportunities here are in Nebraska, um, the, the LIS certificate through Central Community College with um, the possibility of getting an associate through any community college. Some of that could transfer and then there's the undergraduate program at UNO. And then there's the master's level of um, school librarians through UNO or UNK. And then um, the other master's for, for non-education through the University of Missouri with a satellite at UNO. Those are the opportunities that are here in Nebraska. So uh, with all of the exciting things that are going on in libraries these days, uh, it's wonderful. I think it's kind of a great idea to bring in a fresh face. Uh, perhaps your librarians have been working there for a while, and it's a very interesting way for um, everybody involved to take a new look at what kind of library work is going on in your library and then what the trends are just out, out there, uh, e-books and copyright and um, 
various uh, internet security and all of those sorts of things might be an opportunity for you all to take a, a fresh look at all of that, um, infuse some new ideas, and um, also you just never know what your intern might be knowing about and they can bring that to the table too. So what do libraries get out of this? Um, they receive the financial assistance to provide stipends to interns and a lot of our, um, our internship applicants have a specific project in mind um, that they would like to work on with the intern uh, based on the intern's talents or perhaps there's a project that's going on during that time period that they would like the intern to help them complete. Um, we had one library that went automated. Um, we had one library that moved. We <laughs> we've had um, libraries um, go through and weed their collections. Um, we've had libraries that set up computer labs. So uh, those are some major projects. Um, another library um, actually created a new website and they did their training in WordPress and took their intern with them and the intern sat side by side with them and they did it together. So getting to know your intern, um, you decide how the supervision will be conducted and what projects will be completed. And at this point in time, even if you do have a special project in mind, it's important that the intern sees all aspects of library work. Um, front desk, administrative, if you have a bookmobile, outreach, story time, cataloging, technical services, um, just every single aspect. And if it's possible to let them do something hands-on with each and every one of them so that they aren't just observing, but they're actually getting real, they get their hands dirty, <laughs> that they really get a sense for what it's like, um, as much as you can include them when you're giving them the orientation. No, oh, fancy, okay. Um, one great resource for that is a schedule of activities through the Simmons College Mass Blast. They have a design and internship wiki page and I highly recommend that you visit it. I'll take you there for a second and give you a short tour. Um, they have sample schedules from other libraries, curriculum, um, some videos that interns produced, and then um, a way to create your own schedule. And back on the main page, this talks about their programming and that sort of thing, um, I guess. But so actually the, the, previ the previous page that I gave you was probably a better idea. So um, if you're looking for some, some ideas to give some structure, you know, you know, plan it out week one this, week two this, maybe introduce something new every week and then have your project ongoing. Um, we understand that having a, a, an extra set of hands is so important. It frees up time for the other staff to do something. Um, but please make sure that uh, what you're having the intern do is meaningful um, and um, instructional for them. So what are some of the things that you could do with your, your student? Um, you could show them Nebraska Access and ask them a, a reference question and show them how to use some of the databases to, uh, to answer the question. Um, you could have them uh, be, do social networking and do some library two, or some <clears throat> internet 2.0 sorts of things. We've had students who um, were asked to post weekly on the library's Facebook page or compose an entry on the library's blog or Twitter, make a flyer or poster, write a short library newsletter article, something to that effect, um, so that they learn that aspect of pushing out what the library is doing out to the public. You might ask them to do some sort of information literacy task where they critique a website visited to answer a reference question. So they compare different sort sources and you see then um, how, they, how they're weighed and which is the most credible source and how useful is it for a particular ref reference question. And you want to follow the intern's progress along the way. You might keep a scrapbook or diary or ask them to keep a diary. This one student actually did a blog. He had his own blog um, just for the purposes of the internship, so it's now static, but um, everyone was able then to follow his progress, but even just an internal scrapbook or a diary. 
be sure to take pictures of your intern in action with the kids um, at the desk, cataloging, doing their special project. Um, you could submit some of these pictures to the press, or you could ask the press to come and interview your intern and see what they're doing for the summer. Um, especially in small towns, there aren't a lot of opportunities to keep your youth around um, and pay them well. They tend to flock to other places because they get better paid. And so this is a way to show your city that uh, you can keep you can keep your youth local and have them employed right there. And then you want to save the copies of the interns' written works and other projects, and we'd like for you those to submit copies to us so that we can share that with our funder and so that we can help celebrate with you. Um, you can join us on Facebook. We are uh, we have this was designed for the scholarship students to network with Nebraska librarians, but we've also had. Um, interns come and visit this and post on here, um, read our updates, and that is on Facebook, Nebraska Librarians Learning Together. I need to be logged in. So you do need to have, I guess, I don't have to have an account. But you can see that there are posts and that people comment. Um, one time an intern did come to, onto the Facebook page and, and post that she was having a great time and that she had viewed one of our and Cubba's lives and that she was just really excited to work in her, her library. And so it's kind of if you've got somebody who's a little more extroverted and willing to put themselves out there and, and comment on the page, that would be great. And then this is a way for them to see how tech savvy we are and how interconnected we are. Um, follow up with your intern is very important as, and we appreciate it too because We've come to find out um, that an intern has decided, for example, to pursue her undergraduate degree now at UNO in library science. Some of these interns have gone on to be hired in a temporary part-time capacity or they continue to volunteer at a library. Um, some have been hired on in a more professional capacity. So it's a way if you stay in touch with your intern and um, also, we sometimes contact our supervisors and ask, where is your intern now? And we hear some really great things. Of course, um, you know, some of these are high school and college age students who already have a career track. But you can always plant that seed because you just never know down the road. They might be considering a career change and who knows, they might come, come to the library, world of library work. Um, I just want to show you a few things out there um, that I wanted to discuss with you quickly. Just wanted to highlight some of the things that have gone on in the past year with the previous internship grants. Um, you know, they did all of the orientation and then let me see if I can zoom in a little bit here. Whoops. Well, that makes sense. Sorry for scrolling. Mm -hmm. So um, I'll just you know read these out loud and <clears throat> perhaps one of them will inspire you. But we had the annual literature festival up in North Fork and this person just jumped right in and was a part of the team. Um, they assisted in their tech services department. They organized an entire program um, and got it off the ground. And then it was sustained throughout the year um, by the library. Um, a, a lot of times interns are hired over the summer just because of the influx of kids coming through and the um, the need for more hands uh, to help with summer reading program. Um, it's often wonderful if you can give them a pro progressive amounts of more duties, more responsibilities. You know, maybe try to find out at the beginning, you know, how comfortable they are with doing certain things, but maybe by the end of the summer they might actually be planning a craft project um, or something to that effect where it gives them more ownership over it as opposed to assisting and being on the sidelines. A lot of times when you bring youth into the library, um, it's to um, help look at your collection development. And oftentimes, um, youth in the library is eye candy for the other youth in the, in this, in the um, community. Um, they'll see that someone their age is working in a library, and they might come in and see what they're doing and see what it's all about. Um, enhancing the library's website, contributing ideas or writing blog posts. Um, doing some digital digitization. There have been some digitization projects. Um, that's kind of more some of the glamorous parts of, you know, for, for youth. They're all about technology, and so that might be a real draw for them. 
Um, somebody might be interested in graphic design and might create a flyer or display. And then there was one individual who uh, helped uh, with a writing workshop. She assisted in a youth writing workshop, and we'll find out what happened with that in just a second. So this was one where Allison um, did bring in more teens into the library, and their collection, their circulation um, has increased even, even after her internship. And then here's the one where the individual uh, was um, helping um, with, a do with a daughter to, um, with a teen writing contest and thinking about becoming a writer. And um, the girl won first place. And so that's a very happy ending to uh, an intern's intervention in the library. Once again, it's nice to have a breath of fresh air come in from the outside, um, whether it's a younger person or just any another individual. Again, there's no age restriction for our interns. Um, but from very basic things about how to use an LCD projector, um, a lot of times helping patrons with their computer projects or assisting in the computer lab. Um, one person was very comfortable with Excel, and um, so they also saw then the administrative side of things. Um, they did some usability with other websites and made recommendations for how the current website could be improved. Worked with ebooks and e-readers. Um, understood ILS and moved some things over to Twitter. So um, here was one individual who had a lot of um, computer experience and they were able to implement that into some of the tasks that needed to be done. Um, just like this Encompass Live presentation today, we had one where we interviewed scholarship students who had been sent to conferences. And so one of the interns um, sat in on that and gave us just some feedback that she liked hearing about the things that are possible out there. She was able to see it here, again, as a recruiting um, opportunity is that she was able to see what happens with scholarships with students in the library field and what, what's ahead for them if they decide to go that track. Um, out in McCook, uh, this intern made the news. Um, of course, he's, he's in accounting right now. He's already on his track, but he was, in, he was instrumental in helping them complete some of their tasks for the summer. Um, at the end, if you wanted to do an exit interview with your students, what we ask for is a post-internship <clears throat> interview. Um, this information is all collated, and so it's no longer individualized, um, and it's combined into a report such as this, so no names are attached. But you could ask the very same questions of your intern just to find out what they got out of it. Uh, most times it's very enlightening for a student or uh, an intern to find out exactly what goes on in libraries. One of the things that you could do with your intern is um, do some CE, some continuing education. Um, we have someone this summer who is planning on doing some digitizing, and so she and her intern are going to sit through three Encompass Live sessions that focus, they, they, you know, all of these sessions are recorded and available later, so you can watch them at your convenience. But um, she wants to sit down with this intern and learn all about this digitization, and then they're going to do this digitization project together. But you could also go through the... Um, let me see if I can find it. That's not it. Um, under training and Encompass Live webcasts. And you can see what's coming up, but then you can also go to the archived Encompass Live sessions. And the, the two of you could sit down and look at some of these and see if there's anything that might be of interest to them. Each of them has a 
has a description. And so it might be kind of fun to go in and see if there's, you know, just one hour of time that you could either sit down together or have them um, look at it and then maybe, you know, do a project based off of it or uh, just even, you know, sit down with you for 15 minutes and talk about what they learned so that they can see what professionals are doing out there and what exciting things are going on out in the library world. Where was I? I was on my report. So here's uh, an intern that posted on um, Facebook. Hello all, I'm so excited to start my internship. She's going to be in North Platte. And uh, so that was just really wonderful to hear from her. She just jumped right in and became a part of the community. And, you know, at the end we do find, we do ask, you know, how likely it is that they might jump into uh, education or jump into a job. Um, and it, it, the way that they reported was very promising that um, over th three-fourths of them were interested in further education. Now, granted, some of the interns that were hired were already in education, in library education, and that is entirely possible to hire somebody who's already pursuing a bachelor's or a master's in library science. Um, and then also, you know, if they're interested in the internship, they must be interested in working in libraries, and so you, there's some likelihood that they might, you know, at some point in time, choose to, even if while they're in college, you might talk with them about this, you know, try to get a part-time job at the college library or the public library where they just shelf, you know, it's 20 hours a week, it's good money, um, you, you can fit it around your schedule, it's a great part-time job. So um, that went really quickly. <laughs> Maybe I talked too fast. I'm not really sure. <laughs> well, you left plenty of time for questions. I did. I left plenty of time for questions. If anybody has any questions, please go ahead and either type them in the question box or type something in the question box letting us know that you would like us to unmute your microphone and you can ask the question that way. Lots of good information from Catherine here already. But if there's something you'd like clarified, please feel free to ask. Oh, help me out here. We have some time to fill. And Catherine, you did have your contact information up there on your last slide, right? If you want I to get in did. Touch, if they can't think of a question now, but, you know, two days later, something pops into their head. Is there? Let's go to the Mass Blast Wiki page again and take a peek at that. Um, there are these sample schedules, sample public library schedule. It is. So this does go, um, you know, down week one, week two, week three, week four. Um, you'll see uh, a lot of times they um, do field trips. Um, they orient to all the different departments. Um, oftentimes, that might they might if if it's the time for your budget hearing um, to go before the city council, take them along, let them sit in on that, or go to a uh, your library foundation meeting, introduce them, and let them sit in on that. Technical services, public programming. Oh, interesting. This one, they talked about job interview skills. So they, you know, you, you might sit down with them and, and talk about um, how to interview for a job. Um, you might also sit down and go over the different um, schools that are here in Nebraska, again, UNO, UNK, um, CCC, um, Chattern also does offer a minor in um, library science, but no longer a, a teaching endorsement. So there's that one, and um, a farewell party, of course. Let's see, other schedule. And while I'm opening that up, if you would please, um, please do type in your comments um, just 
a project that you hope to complete with your intern, and we can talk about that a little bit. So we do have a question here. Uh, someone says, was this a three-year grant? And I hope it can continue on. Uh, initially it was. It was awarded to us in 2010 by IMLS at the pre-professional level. And with that, we are able to provide scholarships to students studying at the associates and bachelor's level. And then um, the other part that they encourage is the internship program. And so it was a three-year grant, and we're not spending down our scholarship money as quickly as we had hoped, so we re received an extension into a fourth year. And um, <clears throat> NLA, in the lean years between our previous IMLS grant and this one, had um, done some grant seeking, and they had found a, uh, a funder, a, found, a foundation here in Nebraska, who generously provided $10,000 for two or three years um, that helped us get through um, not having the federal funding. And then in the first year of our grant, they were able to use that as match. So NLA did the, did the legwork on that. And we do hope to continue that through other grant seeking um, with NLA or um, our regional library systems, somebody, somebody to that effect, to keep this internship grant program going. So here they show their mass, mass, mass blast goals, which are very similar to ours. Um, broad view of the role of libraries and librarians, behind the scenes, insights. Um, actually, it seems to me we took some of this lingo and put it right into our grant because we found that why reinvent the wheel? This is almost a best practice. Provide instruction in library research skills and then provide opportunities for better understanding of college and career skills. So. Great. Well, this Mass Blast site looks like a great resource. Just want to remind everybody that these links that Catherine mentioned will be in our Delicious account afterwards, and you'll get a link to that when we send out the email about the recording of this session. Um, and if there are documents, we'll put them in SlideShare. And so all these resources will be available at your fingertips. Has anybody contributed what special project they hope to complete? No. Oh, we've got to hear from at least one. Yeah, does anybody out there have an idea of what a project an intern can help you complete? So if we need to play the Jeopardy theme music or something as we age. <laughs> Don't be shy. And maybe you're waiting until you hire your intern to kind of find out what their strengths are. True. Oops, we've got something coming in. Um, our intern will be helping with the summer reading program at our busiest branch. That sounds like a really good use of their time. Absolutely. They need in a lot of libraries. Summer reading is the busiest time of the year. We, got somebody else. we may implement a new cataloging software if everything goes as hoped, so that's another good use of an intern. Oh, they're coming out of the woodwork now. I want my intern to get involved with our Reader's Theater group. Wonderful. We don't usually do any other projects during summer reading, so that's the main attraction. Yep, another summer reading program. Intern. Perfect. Working with summer reading, of course, but hoping to do some YouTube projects with businesses as presented in a previous webinar. Wonderful. <clears throat> which webinar was that? I don't know. If you're out there, tell us which webinar you saw this idea. The idea for the YouTube? Can you share with us where you got that idea? This is a uh, Jan Sears from Kimball Public Library who's saying that. Um, maybe it was the Big Talk from Small Libraries Conference. Oh, sure. 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's some really neat things that are out there now. Uh, Vine is a small video in 10 seconds. Um, those are posted to Twitter. So uh, your student could give uh, a brief tour of the children's nonfiction collection, for example, or highlight uh, one collection of the cookbooks in the adult collection. Um, another one is called WeGIF, and it's kind of stopgap animation where you take still pictures and then you combine them together um, into a video. I, I can't remember what the maximum length of it is, um, but that would be fun, and then you can embed that on your website. Um, you know, or have your students another, bringing in the youth is one way to do some youth projects then, and they all learn together. So um, having, having the youth do a video, you know, if you guys wanted to do some sort of uh, music video or something to that effect, something that's instructional or something to that effect, um, something kind of flashy. Um, Someone wants to know, can you spell those services that you mentioned, the Vine, it's just sure. Vine and, yep. and we do? You bet. Vine is all the rage right now. Short, beautiful, looping videos in a simple and fun way for your friends and family to see. And that's an iPhone, iPad app? It must be an iPhone app. Okay. They'll probably come out with an Android version eventually. <laughs> right. And then um, it's become popular on Twitter. Six seconds or less. That's it. That's wow. all you get. Not much time. No. And um, so, you know, a snapshot of your library you could do something like that. Um, if you have somebody who's really, you know, outgoing, you could take them to your Rotary Club and have them show them or show them to the Rotary Club or something to that effect. And so it just loops the same thing. It just like loops, over. yeah. It kind of gets a little dizzying after a while. Kind of reminds you of home videos, you know, yeah. just real brief. That's cool. That one didn't pop up. And then um, there's Vine. And then there's uh, WeGIF. And actually, I am going to go to Nebraska Learns 2.0. S. I'm not hitting the S. Stop. It's a lot of S's. And there's actually, it's just wonderful because here you have the, getting there, it's number 65, animated. There are different ways to do it, but there's WeGIF service, which um, allows you to make simple animated GIFs of your own. And I actually did one. Uh, <laughs> let me see if I can find that one. La Bibliotheca. Here it is. Here's here's the one that I did. This simple shots with the camera, and then you um, put them in order, and you decide how long they're going to last. And then this one again, it loops. So. Um, just a fun video project, um, an outreach project, something that you can, you know, use to highlight your collection or um, show kids during story hour or something to that effect. Um, and it, it brings in the technology aspect. Maybe you have somebody who's just really tech savvy and 
um, would really enjoy seeing putting that to use. So um, something then for the staff to learn right along with you. You all could do, you could all do the uh, Nebraska Learns, <laughs> the, the we gift together and all learn together. <laughs> So, so that's one to do. Um, and then what was the other, the big talk? Yeah. Presentations. Oh, this was fun. They went and um, went all over their community and had them read from a, uh, the Raven. <laughs> so people from all over the community were recorded reading a couple of lines from The Raven and then they put it together um, into a, a video. Um, and it just erased, it raised awareness and you can watch how, how that happened and maybe you want your student to sit in on this. This presentation from Big Talk um, was recorded and so maybe you and your student would like to sit down, find out they learn about advocacy by watching this video. Um, I don't know if we have sound. Oh, this is the slide share. This is the actual video. Oh, this was his, this is, I don't know if this is the video itself. No, this is the, the whole, this is the whole thing. Let me see if we can jump ahead to watch the recording. Thanks for bearing with us while we, yep, you can see that they're reading. There it is. The quality may not be as good because of the way it was recorded, but you can just see they went um, from person to person. Um, they brought in business people and um, people, students and different people, and they just read two lines or so from the Raven. And then the person who did all the recording, they had to um, edit it. And you could do all of this in Windows Movie Maker. Windows Movie Maker. You can learn all about Windows Movie Maker. Right here, Windows Live Movie Maker. So, um, just a really good, it's free, it's easy to use, um, easy to edit things, and um, works on all computers. Um, you know, uh, if you have a Macintosh, you might want to use iMovie or something to that effect, something that's already installed on your computer. So you've got some more comments coming in here. Okay. Um, one person says, we will once again take our intern to a larger library or a summer CE class. This has been very enlightening, not only for our intern, but also staff. That's a great idea. Absolutely. Let's see here, we've got some more. Yes, Jan says the, is the one she was thinking of, the video we were talking oh, about. Oh, sure. The big talk. Mm -hmm. so, um, my intern is really into music, so could use that too. Excellent. Yeah, definitely. Go with your intern strengths, see what they want to do. Um, can you post those animated photos on the website? Yes, the we gifts. Yes, we'll find those again. Great. That is all so far. Okay. So, you know, some fun video projects or something. And what's, you know, what's neat is that maybe you get out of your comfort zone a little bit. Um, and then you get them out of their comfort zone a little bit. You show them the other side of library work, the maybe not so glamorous part, but the hard work that goes into what, you know, the stuff that goes on behind the scenes so that it goes so smoothly on the other side of the reference desk. Absolutely. Any other questions, comments, insights? Any questions from our out-of-state um, guests here today, were you already planning on, are you, do you have funding for your intern?
or our non-IMLS grantees. Yes, but need more. Not sure what that in terms of funding, perhaps? <laughs> Let's see. There's a question that says, will you email links to the sites you talked about? Um, yes, when the recording of this session is done, we'll send you out an email telling you that you can watch the recording, and it will have uh, all the links that we mentioned. We will make sure get it put into the Commission's Delicious account, and so those will be available to you. So you don't have to strain yourself writing things down. This is what Delicious is. It's a it's an account, and then um, you you post all of your links, and then they're categorized um, and sort of cataloged, and so they'll all be um, listed together, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, someone says I don't know if this is something we can answer, but I think at some point someone said one of the examples of a project was a digital scavenger hunt. Someone said they would like to know more information about that. I don't know. If we're the ones to talk to you about that, but um, I think it was just listed as one of the, you know, one of the um, projects that they did. My guess is that uh, people took their cameras or their iPhones, and then they were given clues, and they had to go and take pictures of it, whatever it was. And it does sound like something. It's a nice self-contained project that an intern could work on. And maybe they designed it for the summer reading program. Mm -hmm. It's possible that they designed it for a teen program or a, um, sometimes the uh, teen interns like to do organize a game night or something to that effect. That's pretty common. Sure. Well, the, the, I think the, the main thing to do is to go ahead and get yourself organized before you start the internship. Know what your expectations of the internship itself are going to be, and then talk with the intern. Um, we did find out uh, from one supervisor that their intern ended up being quite introverted, and so was very uncomfortable doing any front desk. His front desk experience was almost painful for him, um, and so they did orient him to that. He gave him the you know orientation to all of that, but he ended up doing quite a bit in technical services um, and doing a lot of the behind the scenes, and he was quite good at it. So you 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 know uh, just as in anybody who's looking at a career, you know if they don't care to do front desk experience, there are lots of other jobs in the library that they might enjoy, um, and so there are career tracks within library work. Um, not everybody is going to be a reference librarian. Some people would prefer to work in administration, or they would prefer to work. Um, in cataloging or technical services, and that, that's behind the scenes, much much better suited to their skills, their personality, their talents. Um, and so you, you 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 work with your intern and find out what their strengths are and what kind of where they're not so comfortable, and at least introduce them to that part of it. But um, you know, be adaptable and flexible with them. So. Um, well, if there's any last minute questions, please get them in now. Um, maybe while we're waiting, you could go to the Encompass Live page and we'll look at what's coming up next in the next couple of weeks if people are interested in coming back to hear another session. Do I need to go back to our website? Yeah, I go back to our homepage. Under education and training. Here's what's coming up next. Let's see. Next week is Hastings Story Walk. You'll hear about Hastings Public Library and the Story Walk program they've done. Wow, we've actually got a lot scheduled out. University of Nebraska in your neighborhood coming up on May 15th. Library planning on May 22nd. Our monthly feature, Tech Talk with Michael Sowers, on May 29th. And One Book, One Nebraska on June 5th. So if there aren't any other questions, um, thank you for joining us. And come back in the future for another Encompass Live. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.